Hello, I'm Erin Tucker, coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, culinary diplomacy. I'm joined by Lauren Bernstein, founder and CEO of the Culinary Diplomacy Project. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Great. Um, when, we're, when we think, think about and approach culinary diplomacy, how do you pretty much define that? Culinary diplomacy is essentially using food as a tool to connect cultures. It's a way to better understand each other through our food and our traditions and our cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, some definitions that include sort of uh, this overarching theme of culinary diplomacy. Uh, there's a gentleman named Sam Chapel Sokol who mm -hmm. has done a lot of research and writing on this topic. And he basically says there are three pillars, which I agree mm -hmm. with. Uh, you have the government-to-government -government diplomacy, and that's your formal um, exchange through food, maybe high-level uh, dinners like a state dinner or state lunch, uh, where you showcase food of your culture to host um, and connect with the visiting culture. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the government-to-foreign-public uh, pillar, which uh, is uh, essentially what we did with the culinary diplomacy program at the State Department, which is uh, one government reaching out to the citizens of another country uh, to help uh, understand each other a little bit better through food. Uh, and then there's that citizen-to-citizen -citizen culinary diplomacy, which is really a very new area, uh, which is what I'm focusing on as I move forward with my project. Great. Um, there was an article a couple years ago um, that actually mentioned uh, a culinary diplomat. So this was one of the first times I even saw this term. And the culinary diplomat was described as one of the best jobs of the week. Uh, when this came out, you were actually in the position. Could you tell me a little bit about your professional background and what was one of the more memorable experiences that you had while you were in that position? Well, the, um, the position was, uh, I was the director of the culinary diplomacy program. It was called the Diplomatic Culinary Partnership Program. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a, an amazing position. Mm -hmm. uh, that was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I did was I worked with uh, our U.S. embassies overseas mm -hmm. to help uh, send chefs uh, to speak at their uh, embassies abroad. Uh, and engage through food. And it was a, a soft power program, soft power mm -hmm. diplomacy, mm -hmm. where we were able to reach out to other cultures, uh, learn about them through their food, and also teach them about American traditions and culture through our food. Um, and so, you know, depending on what the embassy's goals were, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they wanted to uh, engage women, sometimes they wanted to engage uh, the youth. Uh, so depending on what their goals were, we would uh, program a chef as a speaker uh, through the U.S. speaker program, and the chef would go and engage these communities and do that by uh, cooking with them mm -hmm. and learning about their food. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most wonderful programs we did uh, was sending a, an American chef to Pakistan, and uh, the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan certainly has its challenges in terms of programming and, and outreach due to security concerns and, and, and travel restrictions, and uh, we sent a female chef. The, uh, the culture in Pakistan is very food focused. They have their own food network called Masala TV, and uh, we, our chef was hosted by a female celebrity chef in Pakistan, Chef mm -hmm. Shai. And they together went around to different markets. They learned about uh, our chef, Mary Sue Milliken, learned about the cuisine, the regional cuisine, the, the ingredients, everything about the food culture in Pakistan uh, from different people um, as they traveled around. Uh, they engaged women. This was a program that was targeting um, female empowerment um, and engaging youth with healthy nutrition and, and on food entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, and so being a food entrepreneur, Mary Sue Milliken was very capable to uh, talk about food business mm -hmm. to women in Pakistan, along with Chef Shai. And they were followed by a film crew uh, from Dawn News. And uh, they, the whole exchange was filmed. And the uh, trip was broken down into a four-part miniseries that was aired in Pakistan. Uh, wow. that showcased this learning experience for our chef, um, but also really gave an opportunity for 
the people of Pakistan to learn a little bit about American culture through our food um, and our traditions. Wow. And so uh, when this program finally aired, it aired to millions of people during Ramadan, mm. uh, which is a very popular TV viewing time uh, in Pakistan. And this was the first time uh, the embassy was able to reach that enormous number of people with a positive uh, American message and, you know, Americans learning about the Pakistani culture. Uh, and so it was a very successful program. And because of the press and the, the interest, the media interest in chefs globally, uh, it allowed us to reach and connect with so many more people than we otherwise would have been able to. Wow, that sounds really exciting. In uh, 2017, you ended up starting your own company called the Culinary Diplomacy Project. Um, tell us about how you created this, uh, your company, and uh, what have you been doing so far, and then how do you see your company moving into the future? Uh, my project is a, a nonprofit venture, mm -hmm. and the idea behind it is using food and culture uh, because it is such a powerful tool for us to connect with each other as human beings on a on a human level mm -hmm. to expand and move into the U.S. Uh, with this concept. Um, what we would like to do, ideally, we are um, in the startup process right now, uh, and so what we envision is being able to send chefs overseas to have that cultural exchange mm -hmm. and to learn from the other cultures, but then bring that experience back to the United States and share it with American audiences. Uh, because we've never really been able to do that. You know, the experience was very limited to the chef and the overseas audience. Okay. Um, as a State Department mission, it's a strictly an overseas mission. And so uh, I, I think that right now um, it is a good time to remind Americans that we are much more alike than we are different. Uh, we all have our traditions and we all have our customs. And mm -hmm. I think that if we can <clears throat> engage these chefs, and send them into communities around the U.S. to share the experience that they had while they were overseas by cooking the dishes, telling the stories that they learned through the food and through these interactions. It gives people an opportunity to learn about other cultures uh, when they may not have access to that in their everyday lives. They may not uh, live in a community that has uh, that is multicultural or for one reason or another they've just never been able to have that experience and so um, we think that sharing the food and the stories and the traditions will allow people to better understand each other and connect mm -hmm. um, in a very personal way. Great. What type of advice would you give uh, global hospitality leadership students as well as the program if they're interested in wanting to go into this particular sort of sector um, either career-wise or further discussion? If you want a career in global hospitality mm -hmm. uh, you are going to interact with so many different cultures and it's just so critical to understand those cultures uh, and, and to be able to respect the differences and uh, the nuances of other people's traditions and cultures. And food is just a wonderful way to learn about uh, a people because everyone's traditions and culture is in their food. And so I think that if you want a career in global hospitality, it's critical to really understand uh, all of the different cultures uh, that mm -hmm. are all around the globe. And I think that you can do that by experiencing the food um, and interacting with the people and I think that if you are going to spend your life on this in this global community it's critical to understand each other absolutely well Lauren just want to thank you we want to thank you so much uh, for sharing your insights uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you and thanks to everyone out there for watching stay tuned for more from the LG digital studio at Georgetown SES